Good evening, everybody. Everybody doing all right? Give me a little thumbs up. Y'all doing all right? You can either push the button or give me the thumbs physical so I can see you. Yeah. Not everybody, everybody muted, but uh, talk to me. If you got your camera off, man, I'd rather your camera be on if you don't mind. I like to talk to my people and see them. So I want to first, man, thanks, thanks, send lots of thanks to our brother, Ampu, man, what, what's happening in the Family Wealth Club and the reason why I reached out to him was specific, specifically because I've been watching him so into his network. I've watched him offer to, to help. And so, I, I, you know, he and I would talk about various, you know, projects. And I was like, man, I, I, I don't want to let this small window go by without reaching out to as many people as we can. And I know you have an amazing audience of people who are trying to, they're trying to make it happen. And so I said, I just want to do this for you guys tonight. Um, so I also want to introduce my partner, um, Zenga, uh, and we're going to share some really amazing things with you guys this evening. Won't keep you long. Anybody looking for some money? Yeah. Sound good to me. Sound good to me. All right. And so the first thing I think was the most, is most important is for you. Um, and, and first of all, and also thank you guys for, for, for upfront for being engaging with me. Cause I didn't come to lecture. I came to share some nuggets, but I also want to, you know, hear, get the feedback from y'all. So thank you. All right. Um, but the first thing I want to do is talk about um, the hot button news, right? Which is PPP and what's the top situation, right? If you are self-employed, meaning you drive a, a, a car, a ride share, if you are got a little side hustle cleaning business and you've been putting the money in the account and so forth and so on. If you did work for somebody and they gave you a 1099, if you got an actual business, you got an LLC or any kind of entity and you've been you know, working with it prior to um, last year, 2020, all of those different scenarios uh, will qualify. If you're a hairstylist um, or, or some kind of barber professional in that capacity um, and you're self-employed, even if you don't have an actual business account, but you have your license and you've been depositing the money, that still qualifies you to get some money, okay? From For the Paycheck Protection Program, it's basically the government's bailout, right? Like how they bailed out the banks a few years ago. So this is a great opportunity for you. Um, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna quickly kick it over to Zenga. Zenga is a, is, is a, is a partner of mine. Uh, we're a partner in business. We're also a partner in life and we wanna be able to empower our people. And what, what I want to start with with her and reason I want to bring her in is to set the tone for you because a lot of times we'll have conversations with various business individuals, entrepreneurs, and I find out that sometimes lingo gets, gets confused, you know, um, EIN number versus, you know, LLC versus the, just all the different lingo. And I, and I want to just, you know, set it up for her to, 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 to really give you guys a little baseline as it pertains to where you are right now, how, how you guys can get some of this money. But let's say that based on this conversation, um, you realize you don't qualify. And even if you think you don't qualify, I still want you to reach out to us because I, I, may, I wanna make sure if there's a way to get it to you, I'm gonna help you get it, okay? But if from the dialogue, you realize, man, I really need to get my stuff together. I, I'm ambitious. I want to get into real estate. I want to. I want to. I want to start doing wholesale. I want to start flipping. Whatever. The, whatever your aspiration for being a part of the family health uh, wealth. I call it health club. Wealth club um, association. Whatever your association reason for associating here. Uh, I want to help you guys structure your business in order, so that you can be successful and accomplish your financial goals for you yourself and your family. All right. So can I quickly just. Uh, Push it over to to Zenga real quick, and just uh, Noble, we good there? Hang on, not here, not not hearing you. And while while while, while she's working out the tech, uh, oh, I... here we, there you are. Go ahead. Oh, well, I was going to say, uh, you know, Zenga is a business attorney. Zenga has been doing this for, I don't know, 15 plus years, 20 years, probably um, helping small business, particularly women, right? Big advocate for, for helping women, but helping small businesses structure their organizations, protect their intellectual property, right? And creating, you know, financial wealth um, in the sense of 
from the legal perspective. And I quickly just want, want her to share a few thoughts, you know, kind of set up um, our conversation, you know, going forward as it pertains to entities and so forth and preparation. So oh, yeah, I'm, I'm here to support my brother Ampu. We go back a couple of years and also you, I just sent a text and said, if you, if you need me, I'm here to support. I didn't really have a formal presentation plan. I just want to know where I think you're gonna go with this. I just wanna just tell everyone to lean in, lean in and absorb the information. We do um, work with a lot of people that are in business, doing good business, making um, good money or ready to just go to that next level. And a lot of times because they don't have their back office in order, it creates some conflict. Does it matter if we're talking about people that do good work in the community? Um, if hair, hair, what is it, cosmetologists? Um, pro different professional industries bump into problems when it's time to expand. So when we're talking about, okay, I'm a solo, you know, solo practitioner or, or I'm an entrepreneur and it doesn't matter how long you've been in business if your paperwork is not right. That's so super important. And I was speaking with Jeremy about this earlier today. And I was like, don't forget to mention that the bumps and the challenges we hit along the way because people, you know, are excellent geniuses within their own industry. But then when it comes down to have the paperwork to support it, it looks like on paper, right? They're not um, a fully functioning business. Maybe they don't have uh, their tax returns in order. Guess what? Get with us. We can amend it and get it back on track just like that. Um, maybe they don't have, like we were looking at somebody's uh, preparing their paperwork for the PPP. Um, and I know you probably share about this one. And the accountant had put together some paperwork for us to review. The EIN wasn't on there. So little things like that are so important. And so that was, that's all, always my thing. My passion and my purpose is supporting creative people, helping them get to the next, next level. Um, just making them feel like, okay, you do you, do your craft, do your art, whatever that is, and have me <laughs> or some other professional that's in business in, in business law take care of these small details or give you some advisement. You don't have to do it alone. A lot of times people feel like, oh, attorneys are expensive. Oh, business consultants are expensive. No, um, we recognize that can be so but we also run a nonprofit that is specifically allowing us to pull our heart and soul into the community so that people will never more, ever, ever again, be able to say, well, um, you know, an attorney is expensive. They'll never be able to say that again. And that's been my life work. So I don't know if I touched on everything you might want me to say. I'll be here if you want to bounce something back out off for me. But my, my point here is lean in. You're really in for some really, really good stuff when it comes to um, what you can do with your business. And if you're not in business yet, how you can jump into it, um, how you can maximize all the resources of Family Wealth Club. All of that is so important. So I know you're going to shine a bright light on Family Wealth tonight. I'm ready. I'm here for it. Let's go. All right, guys. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you just just teeing it up. Um, I think what's you know what's what's most important is let's let's just dive right in here. I think from what what Sammy is saying is a lot of times you know these opportunities come in cycles, right? If you guys think back about a few years ago when um, Obama was was the president. And there was a whole issue with the economy and banks. They did a bailout, right? And so there was a problem, and they gave some money into the inject some money into the economy, and only certain groups got it, and they how they used it. And then last year, you know, boom, situation happened again. They created opportunity, and only certain groups happened. And so new president, right? And they restructured it, and then created more opportunities. And what we want to what we're, we want to start this is this to say to you is make sure that you get prepared. If for nothing from this session tonight, getting prepared means, you know, finding out, deciding what you wanna do, figure out what you need as an entity, okay? Get an expert to help you do it, or go to someone who's doing it and, and see if they can, you know, you can trust their opinion, like on pool, right? And then get guidance to take, to, so you get help to take you where you wanna go. All right. So um, can I share? I'm pulling my, my set up to share. Yes, sir. All right. All right. 
let's let's just go right. To, I have a little. Let's have a, a brief brief little PowerPoint for you guys, really quickly. One second, just so I can talk through. And it's always good to have a little visual. So give me one second, please. Let's share this thing. Okay, I'm trying to share on screen. One second. All right, cool. Can you all see it all right? One of my team members put together this information. So I uh, just wanna make sure we're good. Um, and we put this together quickly. I, I, I want you to know who I am just so, you know, I know I'm who set it up, um, but just from a standpoint of, of just, you can literally Google me. Um, but, you know, my core, when I started in the business uh, is advertising been doing this for quite some time since since the early 2000s been doing it since I was in college years before every in every industry that goes from entertainment music fashion food publishing um, to, to to not profits and what's most important and I've touched I've worked for various brands national brands that you guys see and use daily but what's most important is my focus on helping entrepreneurs or businesses grow. When the pandemic came, you know, I switched, switched my focus from, you know, chasing after our, our big brands and that kind of thing, and really trying to chase after helping entrepreneurs, helping small businesses, people who, who have a passion to grow and to just find success. Because during, how many of y'all during the pandemic had to find a new way to create income and create money? All right, majority of, majority of us. And so I really want to focus on that. So I'm gonna dive right into this, right? So round one of the PPP, and by the way, if you have questions, uh, I saw some somebody already started just popping it in the in the chat. Um, one of my team members are here, uh, just help me out by, you know, um, responding to some of those messages if you have the answer to it. Um, if not, I'm gonna, we're gonna respond and Zenga's gonna um, help you respond as well. I did paste the link, the link into where, right off the bat, if you, if you need to, set an appointment. By the way, there's no fees to set an appointment and talk with us. Just tell you guys up front, all right? So I did put a calendar link in there if you wanna set an appointment, if you have to go or anything like that, you have it right in the chat. All right, so round one, you're allowed to get up to $20,000 if you're in these categories that I started with, right? Earlier when we, we started to speak. And how do, you, how do you get about 20 grand, right? Um, you get that by by your income, your gross income. If you're working from a Schedule C, or we talk about a, a 1099, right? Your gross income on your tax returns um, being, I think, anywhere plus or minus from about ninety thousand dollars to one hundred thousand dollars, right? Now you've seen probably seen ads where other people have gotten, um, you know, more than that, right? So if you have more employees and your payroll is significantly different, that's when your dollars will be higher but I, I've assumed and let me check the check the room for, for who I have here I'm assuming most of you all and just do a little thumbs up if this applies to you most of you all are self-employed or got your own business right yes is that it so so I can know if I need to talk about people who might be um who have more, who have employees if you have a store or something like that and you have more employees um I can you know I didn't gear it to you but we can talk about how to help all of them and you at the same time all right now, what happens with round two, and I'm not sure if anyone, has anyone in, the, in this room gotten PPP funding before, but didn't get round two? All right, all right, no, no, nobody says anything on that. So round two, once you've actually gotten funded and within, you can, once you, once you collect all the documents, put in the application, plus or minus, uh, they, they've been averaging one to three days to get something back, as long as the, the application is pristine and clear, you get a little confirmation back, okay? After that, then once once they're good, they'll send you a nice little uh, agreement. And I'm gonna touch on this part of it where the difference between the loan and the grant, how can we get the grant for free, right? So they're gonna send you an agreement and you know, be from the SBA and they're gonna tell you the details of the loan Right, you, you've been approved. And by the way, everybody I submit, get approved. I don't submit your application if your application is not right. So let me just say that. Everybody else, unless you gave information that's not accurate, I don't submit it until it's right. So that means our team's gonna review it. We'll make sure everything is good. And 
you're going to you're going to get approved. We know that. We believe that we operate that way. So once you've gotten funded on the first round, if we have enough time, there's only about three, three to four weeks left, right? It's only May 31st, as long as there's money, then they'll give you um, a second round application and then you'll be able to get up to forty um, uh, $1,000 within this PPP funding program, all right? So just touching on that. Um, and also I'll, I'll say this, and I was gonna say this at the end, we can also help you, once you've gotten your PPP funding, I'll help you get the SBA um, EIDL funding as well, which can be up to 500,000, depending on what your gross, gross revenue is. But if you're, if you're within a certain price point, a minimum of 150,000. Okay. Um, I see a lot of things happening in the chat. Um, all right. So let's touch on what are the various scenarios or criteria, right? Oops, sorry. So like I said before, these are some of the areas where, where you, you, know, you, can, you, you, you can benefit from it if you're in these various industries, if you're a, set, a store or you know, 1099, self-employed, okay? Now, how are you gonna apply? Let's talk about knowing your numbers and understanding what your situation is, right? So obviously one, you gotta contact us, right? I want you to know your numbers. And what, what do I mean by knowing your numbers? So. I will say to you, if you heard me say before, in order for you to get $20,000, right? And if somebody's comfortable in the chat and you want to tell me maybe where your gross is at, I can give you some scenarios for, you know, and I can just pick some random numbers. So you kind of get an idea of if you can't get 20,000, how much can you get, right? So it's important for you to understand most people don't realize when you're doing your taxes, right? Your gross, your, your gross could be, let's just say you use a big number, like right? let's say your gross is, 500,000 or a million dollars in income. It doesn't mean you're gonna, you're gonna be taxed on all of those or you'll be responsible for that amount. So you can actually deduct your operation expenses. Even if you had a job, a day job, you can dedu deduct those operation expenses down and you are gonna pay your taxes on the net, all right? I know it's a little brief accounting class, but the idea here is for you to start to think of, a lot of people automatically disqualified themselves. How am I doing? Is, 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 has anyone done that? Has anybody automatically said, oh, I don't qualify because they heard some particular um, scenario from, you know, from whomever? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work, oh, my little, my little uh, slide program here didn't function properly. So what we're gonna do is we're going to walk you through by working through your numbers, making sure that we figure out what your gross revenue is. And by the way, like what Semi said in the beginning, if for example, that you realize that your gross numbers were a little low, right? And if you've already filed your taxes, if you, and if you hadn't filed your taxes yet, that's a, you're still in a great position because we can analyze your documents and help you to figure out what's best for you, right? So that's the first thing. Two, if you've already filed, we can still go back and review your documents and amend it for you to make sure you can benefit from this. Because if you filed your taxes already, then the less likely chance that you're also going to be able to apply for the EIDL funds. And I know some people have maybe gone done that on their own. Okay. And if you have questions about this that I'm not that I haven't covered, um, please feel free to, to type it right into the um into the chat so that I can I can respond to it um, as I as I push through. Okay, so what are some of the documents that you might that you might you might need? I'm gonna come back to the testimonial. I wanna I wanna uh, I wanna get to the some of the documents that you guys might need first, right? So that you can so that so that you can be in a place where you're you're comfortable with knowing what documents you have and what we can what we can. Uh, replace it with if you ne if, if necessary, right? So you're gonna need things like your tax return, your 1099 documents, right? If you have um, your state ID front and back, right? Your February 2020 bank statement, right? They changed it from 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 April. Your February 2020 bank statement. Now. 
Here's where it's interesting because I have the 1099 and bank statement up. If you are, if you are self-employed but do not have a business like a LLC or something like that, a business bank account, but you're 1099 or you're you are a stylist, a hair, a barber, you know, um, a real estate agent, even an attorney or um, anyone that that can work um, and get income as a, with a with a general license you can still apply for this, all right? And you can still get qualified. We just need to work and make sure we can document showing activity deposits in February and March, showing that you were actually doing, operating during that time. You need to show some proof, right? That you were actually working, all right? During the pandemic, you know, which would be like February, March, April, um, for the most part. That's where the PPP covers, okay? Up to February, March. Um, so, so those are some of the core documents that you're going to need. If you have an entity, you're going to have to prove that you have an entity. So you have to provide your entity, entity form information, which would be like your LLC filing, or if you have a license for your hairstyling or for, you know, any kind of business that doesn't have, doesn't require you to have an entity, we'll be able to help you get that filing done as well. All right. Oh, wait, I think there's messages that I'm not seeing. Um, yes, you can apply for round two um, now if you've already got funded, okay? And I wanna quickly stop this and I wanna quickly just uh, run, my, run my testimonial. All right, so, so let's say $50,000 was what your gross revenue was. There's a very specific formula that the government structured and So basically, if you if your gross revenue was fifty thousand dollars, someone asked about uh, throwing fifty thousand dollars as a as a scenario. Um, you would be able to walk away with a check for ten thousand four sixteen on round one, and that that would drop you to about twenty thousand eight three three, okay, um, for for round one and round two. And all, all round one means and round two means is that once they fund you the first time then they'll fund you again the second time right after you've been funded the first time because they're trying to deplete the funds. Straight, that's it, that's the only reason, all right? Um, now, I think this is the most important thing. You know, you've gotten the money, well, maybe one of the most important things. You've gotten the money and you're doing your thing, but it's actually a loan. Now, here's how you get this to become a grant. All right, so the government, was giving this money away to businesses to help keep people employed. And so, because during the pandemic, they, the government shut down the country very by state, right? And so they prevented you from doing the things that you would normally do to get income. Thereby, they said, okay, here's the reasons for, why, for how we would cancel out your loan. One, 40%, 40, 40, 40% of the funds is directly allocated to salary. So, so for the person I just gave you the scenario of the, the 10,000, what did I say? The 10,416, right? 40% of that, which is exactly $4,166, right? Is completely your compensation, right? So you got about five grand or so, um, left that you must now what we call expense. So that's reasonably easy. Anyone got a cell phone bill? Yeah, anybody got uh, a fax? If you got a fax machine, anybody got rent? Anybody work from home? Anybody wear, oh, anybody have to have to wear a specific type of clothing when you do your job, right? These are the various conditions where you, when you spend the money, oh, insurance, anybody have insurance? Everybody got a car. Anybody got insurance, right? These are various expenses that the government would, would authorize, approve for you to deduct off of the loan. And all you gotta do is we'll properly help you to itemize those, okay? And that will help you to not have to pay that money back if we're able to itemize the complete amount you know, legitimately used. And I'll walk you guys through that once we kind of get your package together, how you can get this entire loan waived and now it's just a grant. How's that sound? How's that sound? 
Y'all were talking to me before now. You gotta, y'all gotta make sure you give me little, little signals back. All right. Um, make sure I'm covering. So someone someone said, so if your self-employment income is not 90,000, you don't qualify? No, what I'm saying is if the reverse, if you if you if you make 90 to a hundred thousand dollars, right? That would put you in a position to get to, to get the max available amount, which is the twenty thousand eight hundred and thirty-three dollars. Hopefully, I clarify that for you. So, someone said that that their tax, their tax lady did not do a Schedule C. So, what you're going to do is, like I said, um, well, let me started by saying that if 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 we've evaluated your situation and you find out that you, you could qualify based on specific questions, right? Those will be income, your, your type of work that you're doing and how you did it and how you document it. If we talk with you and find out that you can, all we have to do is get you to go back to your tax lady, demonstrate your, that, you are, that you're self-employed, okay? And she's gonna, she's gonna do a profit and loss for you, okay? And I'll walk you through Right, we'll, we'll walk you through how to structure that appropriately so you can speak the right language to your, to your tax person and we'll get you to do a modification. And by the way, by the way, by us helping you to modify, not only will you be positioned to get the PPP, in addition to that, to get the EIDL, right? And so I'm, I'm gonna respond to the person about, that wrote about the EIDL. You'll also be able to position yourself to work with People like the Family Health Wealth Club. Woo, there's some health stuff going on there, uh, um, Pooh, that we need to talk about because it keeps coming up. Um, by getting you biz access prepared to get business credit, by getting you positioned, right now banks are literally giving away money to businesses. And so if, you, if, you've, if you've had a challenge before, this, by you structuring, restructuring your accounting, restructuring how your taxes are done, we will be able to put you in a position beyond the PPP as well, all right? Just wanna point that out. There's some byproducts that by you properly structuring the way you do your business and by restructuring your accounting if necessary to do your tax returns, the, some additional byproduct benefits is that you can position yourself to gain some uh, business lending information, some business loans. Um, so, someone asked the question, if I have an EIDL loan on your business, how does the PPP loan forgiveness plan to it? They're two separate things. Um, EIDL is just that. It's a, it's, a, yeah, it's a loan for economic disaster. And the PPP is specifically for income, for making sure that the idea was it was created to provide lost wages to people who lost their wages. Anybody lost money during the shutdown? If you lost money and you were self-employed in some way and the government stopped working, this is what it's designed for. Um, for the person that talked to me about the SBA um, and, and getting declined and, and, and the, you know, restructuring, uh, reach out to me and we would need, in order to answer the questions, I would need to Itemize, you know, ask you some more details in order to answer that. But I can, but we can also consider some other options for you. Uh, well, well, Sammy, can you type type uh, type the? I, I pasted the calendar link. That's the link you can set an appointment. Um, and then the website. If you could type the website in the chat, it was semi-stenet.com, and we have contact information on there. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch back really quickly. I just want to play a testimonial from a gentleman who's a who's a, a business owner, but what was probably most important is that he's he's just a regular guy that was able to um, you know benefit from reaching out to us. Has a business entrepreneur, and you know he's trying to you know get some some capital, and we were able to assist him in doing just, just that. One second, let me just pull this, pull this up.
and hopefully the audio plays through. Hello and good afternoon. My name is Woody Charles, Woody Anthony Charles from Diamond Power Consulting Group. This video presentation is for is for West Cement Business Advisors due to the fact that your organization had provided a service on my company behalf in providing a solution result for payroll protection program, which is called PPP under the Small Business Administration. I would like to say, I would like to personally thank yourself and your organization in providing a successful solution for Diamond Power Consulting Group on receiving his payroll protection program, PPP loan. We look forward to hiring your organization again on our next process on the SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan Processing now, now what's, on our company. What's great for this gentleman is, and, and, why, and why, why I appreciated it, it was, was that this is a guy who's working from home, building his business, right? and figuring it out. He actually works with a lot of independent contractors. <clears throat> and so he was a, he was an, a, an ideal person to use as a testimonial because he's not a traditional business person that has all of their ducks in a row, you know, has all of the accounting and everything straight. And we had to work with him to make sure everything was in place. And as you can see, you know, he's, he's as he's speaking, he's trying to, you know, put everything together. And so I wanted it to be real natural and for y'all to be able to say, oh man, that guy can get it. I could definitely get it. And, and he also, you know, felt very comfortable, you know, sh saying that and sharing that. Um, yes, uh, Zenga does do trademark filings. Um, we can definitely assist you in that area. You can just, you, you can still make, make, make an appointment on the calendar or, or, or just hit the contact on the website and we can reach out to you um, to, uh, to, to discuss it. All right. Now let's talk about fees, right? Because, you know, it, it might cost a little bit of money. The good news is it doesn't cost you anything up front to um, get this done. So here's how we get paid. I'm gonna put my slide back up really quickly and I'm almost through. I won't keep you all along. All right, so, so the idea here is Right. Depending on where in the where in the country you are, I've heard all sorts of fees and costs that people charge. So so we charge an application fee to help you process, figure out all the things that that you that you need. Okay. And then and then we charge. Um, it would be nice if my little thing. We charge six percent, six percent of the funded amount, not fifteen. Not 12, not 10%, not 10,000, not 8,000, not 6,000. 6%, which is absolutely um, really reasonable and will assist you all in doing it. And why, why is that? It's because I want to be able to make sure that you all maximize the amount of money you, you have. And, and, and we'll, what we want to do next is show you how you can take the dollars and turn it into more, right? So, you know, we, we, just, we want to create an environment where you guys can benefit. Um, you know, financially from this. All right, we already shared some of the documents that you might need. And I think that is a wrap for my slideshow. And I wanted to make this real simple. This is not a complicated opportunity. That's that's why the slide, I think we had like five, six slides. This is not a complicated opportunity. Uh, when, when preparation meets, was it opportunity, you win. And so here's the thing, even if you're not prepared, how about just desire, right? When, 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 if you have a desire and you believe that you're in the position to, this is the opportunity for you. It's this money, this money was created for you as citizens and as, as entrepreneurs, as, as middle class, as upper middle class, wherever you believe you fall as a wealthy person, right? Um, it was created so that you can restore whatever you were lost last year, or at least get back on track and I mean, what was the fourteen hundred dollars going to do for you anyway, right? So, so this PPP opportunity is great for you, um, so that you can get what you need. Do y'all have any questions? Um, 
someone asked for the, do the document slides. It was only, it was, only, it was on, sure, it was only a reference point. Let me just kind of maybe quickly run down some of the documents you're gonna need, okay? You're gonna need your tax return, 2019 tax returns. By the way, um, if you have not done your taxes, you're in a good position. Let me remind you about that. I'll walk you through what that means and how that will benefit you for getting the funds. You're gonna need your ID if you have a 1099. If you're just becoming a 1099 contractor this year, it's not gonna work out for you as it pertains to the, the PPP. However, there are funds available um, for businesses that are new that are starting during the same time, during the pandemic. So still you can reach out and I'll show you how to benefit from that. You can also apply for the EIDL and we'll show you how you can do that. Um, documents, 1099, 2019 tax returns, ID front and back, February bank statement for 2020, February bank statement for 2020, your proof of your business or like your, L, your entity, LLC, S Corp, whatever you have, right? Or certification, some kind of, you know, certification if you have license, so forth. If you don't have a bank account, business bank account, but you were 1099 or self-employed and didn't say declare that you have a business, that's still workable. We can work through, work with that as well. Um, if you got the EIDL, um, you can collect both. That's they're two separate things, uh, Rogene. If I'm saying it right, it's two separate things. EIDL is completely different from the pay Paycheck Pro Protection Program, so you, so so you'll be able to be okay. Um, and then depending on your structure and your situation, there may be other small documents that you may need to provide that we can talk about based on your own eva evaluation. So, all right, um, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm pretty much at the end. Now I wanna share this, this last little tip. Uh, I heard, I heard Ampu say that if you join his program and you're gonna, um, and, you, and he's gonna give you access to the application right and you got a contract so if somebody actually from this group tonight actually go ahead and does it and you have a, a, a document to be reviewed i would like to offer our firm to assist you all with reviewing that real estate document that is a value of, a, of at least two thousand dollars depending on what the document is and how complicated it is um in a like a real estate closing so to speak right so i want to offer to assist you all because just like how the Family Wealth Club is focused on your success, uh, I encourage you to go ahead and join that program. And we want to support you guys in taking the next step. And I want to I want to give you also a scenario as I wrap it up for how you can take some of these dollars that you have and how you can turn it into more. You know, we talked about doing the real estate. Um, you can pool those resources, right? And from pooling those resources then we can um, <clears throat> help you to pay down credit cards or get credit cards and then use that to pull cash so that you can buy a, you know, maybe you wanna buy a home or property. Maybe you want to do Airbnb, right? Maybe you wanna do a deal with, with, with the Family Wealth Club, right? Now it'll give you cash. And what you do is we'll show you how to use the forgiveness document to structure it. In addition to that, it will help you by applying for the EIDL and you can pull those dollars and do the same thing. Now, listen, the deadline is May 31st, but at this juncture, the idea will be that you're in about, you're really about two to three weeks left for dollars, right? It's May 31st or when the money runs out. So even if you wait too long and you su submit the documents, then, and you, and, and, you know, you're at the back of the line and the money's out, it's not gonna matter, you're not gonna get the funds. So, right, the early bird gets the worm. Um, the best thing to do is, is really wanna start getting the application in as soon as possible. Um, and reaching out to us and getting on board immediately doesn't mean that your application is, is gonna be in. So, so the faster you get your, your reach out and figure something out is the faster it, is, it'll help you be in position to win. Uh, I just wanna answer a couple more questions I saw come in. What if, what if you have a business for something else? 
and you want to use a loan for a new business. So like I said, remember that 40% of the money is yours as an income. So, so that you can, you can choose to do that with the money. If, if, if the costs, the exp if some of the expenses to start a new business is um, a part of the grant exemptions, then you can, yes, then you can do that. So, so, so my answer to your question would be, yes, you can use some of that money, like I said, for other purposes. We just need to make sure that we can document that the use that you're gonna use is actually qualified for the grant forgiveness, right? And we can show you how that, that can be done. So the answer is yes, with some conditions. All right, um, I'm trying, uh, Zenga, you, I would love to just bring you back and see if there's any, any closing words you want to uh, add. So just, just for clarity, you're saying um, of the amount that you, are, well, two things. One, if you make less than $90,000, you're just saying that you wouldn't get the 20K. But you can get the amount that will work for you. So that's why I, um, I use 50,000 as an example. But right. even, if, even if you were getting, even if you, you made 20,000, if you want to declare $20,000, right? you're still if you're eligible you're eligible it's just it just reduces the amount you get so if you get if you made twenty thousand dollars gross right you can get just under five thousand dollars and round one and round two put you at eight to nine ish and then i'll show you remember the idea is what you do with the money sometimes it ain't, what, it ain't how much you made right it ain't how much you make, it's what you do, what you got. So we can then get in another group session like this and I can show you guys how you can use it to invest in a, in a, in a real estate transaction. Like, like the gentleman said in the beginning, that's gonna help you pay, give you money long-term. So how do we take some of the cash and do something with it besides just pay some bills, right? Because all it's gonna do, you pay the bills and it's gone. But man, if you pretend you're in the same situation and take that cash that you did not expect to get, and I'm, and I'm gonna comfortably say this, professionally, if, if you're in the right situation, more than likely, I can guide you into how to properly structure your accounting, right? And if you filed already or not, to make sure that you can benefit from, you can maximize this opportunity. And you said 40% uh, you can expense out as your income. So the remaining 60, right? That's when you're looking at your business expenses outside of your person. Yes. That's why you talked about insurance. You talked about um, clothing or different things that you need for your, to be able to do your job or pre run your business. Yes. That's where the remaining 60 will be expensed out, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And, if, and, and if, if you want to try to use it for another business, right, you're going to have legal expenses. You're going to have, you know, some, some accounting expenses, right? You're going to have some, whatever those expenses are that can be still be on the grant exemptions or the forgiveness exemption rules. And this, you know, this information is available. Um, I can provide that to you all. So you all can, if you reach out, uh, we can provide that to you. I just have one comment um, that, you know, just I've been hearing a little buzz in the air about, you know, the government and, and this program and a little bit of fear around it. But I, what, I'm glad you went back to 2008. And I'm glad you talked about uh, the quote unquote bailout that didn't trickle down to the rest of the people. Um, I want to remind you, I don't know if who was watching uh, President Biden's speech. Um, and what he said is this administration recognizes that 90% of new employment comes from entrepreneurs. It comes, it's coming through the 1099s, right? The bedrock, like he, he they just, this administration just put out a, um, a um, all these studies. And, uh, you know, I just like to emphasize that because sometimes in certain communities and groups, we get a little fearful when we talk about the government. That's why I'm glad um, my brother Ampu has the flag behind him because this is our, this is our uh, joint too, <laughs> right? This is our joint too. So he's saying, uh, what did he say? I'm um, like three fourths of the economy is y'all, right? So if we talk about all oh, the bailout, a conspiracy, da, 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 this administration is saying, look, we ran the numbers, three fourths of it. So if we're going to do a bailout, that's what, uh, Jeremy, that's what you call a bailout. It needs to go in this direction. So 
I like to remind people of that so they can deal with the fear of this government thing. We hear anyway, right? We hear. So let's work the system that's been put in place. We hear. Um, and I thought about that because somebody said, are you doing, uh, do you do trademarks? And um, uh, President Biden just issued a, a trademark, not trademark, but a, but a, um, a proclamation honoring World Intellectual Property Day, which is actually less than a week now. But I love it because he said bedrock of everything is based on the creative people, whether it's, a, he said, whether it's this one person or family's dream. So I'm like, yo, this proclamation is so good. If y'all wanna know about it, it's like, I I've been reading it to everybody that's into it because he's saying 75 years, what have we done to honor the creative people? What president do y'all know that did that? We're honoring entrepreneurs, we're honoring small businesses. And he said that that was his proclamation uh, honoring World Intellectual Property Day and the 75th year of the Lanham Act um, which is about uh, trademark, but I just re that really sunk in for me that he that he made that entire proclamation. He said, "What people are doing tinkering in their garage is just as important as what's being produced in these high tech labs." What president has said that? So I want you know I always want to remind people like we're here, we're gonna be okay. We we can we can jump in and take advantage of um, programs that been been put in place. If, if he's saying 90%, if he's saying you all, us, me too, I don't run some big, huge corporation. He's saying if we are the bedrock of the nation's economy, what did he say at the, um, to the, 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 the state of the, whatever the address he did, the joint, the joint session, he said um, the bedrock of our economy rests with entrepreneurs. That's serious. That's why he said, okay, we, we need to do a Buy America campaign to honor the people. How many of you all are out there making clothes? We deal with fashion designers every day, right? We deal with all these small businesses every day. So I, I'm going to stop now because I can talk all day about what's going on um, right now that, like you said, Jeremy, we need to take advantage of. You, you said opportunities here. Now all we need is preparation. And so if you're not prepared, we can get you there and it's not gonna cost you an arm and leg. And you said, um, when you get funded, right? Is that what you said? Or, or do I need to walk into the office with uh, 645? No, uh, no, the only, we don't take any money up front. We will look, we'll look at your, your situation, we evaluate it. If you can, if I believe you can qualify, then we'll, we'll sign the documents, we'll process it for you. And then on the other side, once you get funded, then you'll, you'll pay, that, pay that fee. Um, the only, the, I will give the caveat, the, the only time that I would say that, you know, the application fee would be due would be if in fact, I mean, that you would have to pay it if you get, if you get declined and, you know, we submitted everything and everything was good on our side, then we will still ask you that you'd have to pay that um, fee because um, unfortunately, you know, everything was done right. But for the most part, everyone that we submit, you're gonna, you're gonna get approved, all right? And you're getting, you're getting a full business analysis, not just for uh, the PPP. Right. It's setting you straight from henceforth, right? Yeah, this is gonna set you up. That's a good point. Thank you for saying that. Like I said, this is gonna set you guys up so that beyond the PPP, business-wise, Right, sorry. You're, you're gonna be you're gonna be set. You're gonna be in a you're gonna be in a good position to win going forward. You can practice some good habits from this session. You will absolutely get some amazing nuggets from this. And this is all compliments of the Family Wealth Club. So, you know, man, you know, take advantage of the opportunity at least for the consultation, right? At a minimum for the consultation. You know, take advantage of the opportunity. I'm, a, I'm, a, you know, I really think it's important. And I want to just hit one more person commented. Um, Marley, uh, you know, said, I thought it was 60% that could be used for payroll to pay yourself. So I want to address it um, really quickly. All right, hang on. Let me, the, 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 the calendar link is on the website. It's not on the website. I'm, I was pasting it in the, in the, uh, in the account. See so I'm going to just, I'm going to just, um, just paste it here again for you guys in a second. So I want to address the, the, the question about that. What, what I, when it comes to scenarios like we just described today, where if you don't have like a formal payroll, 
right? Round one, they, they definitely had it for 60,000 and they did, they don't, they do have that out there for 60%. So what I always, what I do, what I do is I encourage you to do 40% and then we, the, the difference will be what I call um, itemized for your deductions and it'll put you, it puts you in a, in a safer position for the forgiveness. And so that's, so, you know, I wanted to address it. Marley asked it directly in the chat and I just wanted to address it to the group. Cause if you do Google, you do see that. But if you're not in a position where you had traditional payroll and you had a traditional structure, then you wanna, you wanna, you wanna position yourself to be safe, right? And so, so that's why. And so when I, walk, when I work with you and I go through everything, each person's situation is gonna be unique. So we are giving as broad of, of, of a statements as possible so that, you know, as a group here, um, I think there's a hundred people here as a group, you can get the information and feel comfortable saying, I don't want to miss out and then re reach out and we can find, you know, whatever you, whatever you're going to need. So please um, just click the, uh, the calendar link is in, is in the box, it's not on the website. However, the phone number and email is there on the website. I just wanted y'all to kind of be able to have access to the site to see all the various services that, that are available. Um, and the chat, I'm putting the website again, again, but the calendar link is probably the best point because you can make the appointment and we can set a time to talk with you. And I, you should be good. Any other questions? Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm not, it's not going to the group. It's going to one person. Hold on, sorry. That should be better. I apologize. All right, so if, if there's no more questions, I am going to, um, I mean, and, and by the way, my name is Jeremy Stennett. If, if all that contact stuff, it's not working for you. Just type my name into Google. It'll come right up. And my contact numbers and everything is right there. You can find me on, on whatever outlets. It's easy to find me. Um, Andrew, you have a question? You want to put that in? You want to put that in the chat, or you want to ask it live? Yes, Joan, we work with trademarks. Ampu, do you want do you um do you want to just do if they have a live question they want to ask with audio? Just do it, put it in the chat. Okay. All right, guys. Like I said, if you, you you wanna you wanna I'll even put a phone number if you want to just do that. That way it'll be easier. Um I'm gonna give you my direct number to my desk. All right, that way you can reach. Oh, okay. You gave me the pot, you gave me the controls. I didn't realize that. You got to unmute our, our illustrious host. <laughs> there you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, I'm sorry about that, man. I just muted myself. That way it wouldn't be no background. Um, But yeah, it's, I mean, I see Samara got the hand up. Um, If you want to raise your hand, that way we can unmute your line. I'm, baby, let's do it. You know what I mean? So whatever, whatever you need, y'all. I mean, now's the time. So don't don't be shy. I, um, I just did uh Samara. Mm hmm. And. Andrew, I did too. You guys should be you should you guys should be able to good now. If your audio should be good. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Samara. Is that you? Yeah, that's me. What's your um, question? So my question is, um, I, and I saw someone else kind of pose the same question in the in the chat, but so if someone is like a has like a pin ninety nine. Um, um, and wants to apply for the PPP. However, when they get the funds, they would actually like to use the funds to, um, you know, start a new business or something like that. It, is that possible? So the answer, the answer I gave earlier is yes, right? With contingencies, right? With some conditions, meaning the percentage that's going to be available to you personally, right? You can use that for yourself. So yes, 
I mean, you can start really, you can start a, start a business with, you know, the basic numbers, right? You can start a business for less than a thousand dollars, right? So, so depending on what you're trying to do. So the idea will be the portion up to 60, but I'll, I'm keeping you in the 40% box. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. That money is available for you to use whatever, whatever means you weed. You're going to write, you're going to, when you get it, you're going to write a check to yourself in the amount that, you know, that, that qualifies for your personal compensation. And then we're going to work with you to make sure that you structure how you spend the other, the other dollars. You're still going to, I'm still going to help you pay your bills. Right. But I'm going to show you how to do it properly so it can be free. So it can be a grant. So it can be um, forgiven. Right. That's the government's word for, um, you know, for the grant version of it is that they'll, they'll forgive it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. And, and let me add to that, that you can also, if, if, if you get qualified, this is why the PPP is great. If they funded you for the PPP, that means you're a good position, good candidate to get the EIDL for, you know, as well. Now, some people have already reached out and got the EIDL, right? So they've actually, they've actually created a new opportunity to give you more. This, this is the time for your life to change. If there, no, if there was never a time, in America, in your generation, in your lifetime, if your family didn't have no money before, if you always had a side hustle, this is the time for you to win. So, you know, hopefully you, you, get, you get what I'm saying. Um, go ahead, uh, Rojean. Uh, yes, Rojane. Hi, Rojane. Sorry, thank you. Uh, the question I have is: I was able to get the EIDL, and I got the grant and the loan at the time. I had four employees. Now I just have one, or well, really two, myself and another uh, driver. But I also had just started a business where I had finally got the business account set up and at a bank, and you know, with the expense and all those things. And then what I did was I uh, had gotten the EI and all the you know preliminaries that you need for the second one. So I met the criteria, but when I applied for the EIDL for that portion of it, because I did it in the very beginning, the first you know go round, and um, when I did it, but I got denied on the second business, but I got approved on the first business. And then at that time, because remember the rules kept changing by the week. At that time, if you did the EIDL, you could not get the PPP. So this time I didn't even try for the PPP because I was like, well, I don't have a formal payroll for either business. One business I've had existing for 15 years and the other has been since 2019. So that's only two years, but I didn't make any profit on the second one. So I wasn't sure. So I just came on here to get enlightened because I didn't think you could do them both. It's like they said, you had to, if you got the uh, idol, you had to pay that back before you could do the PPP and vice versa. So now, you, you know, so the rules have changed so many times. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, you said a few things. One, I'm gonna reiterate, they are completely two different things. So yes, the rules completely change. Right. Um, there, there's some free, there's some free EIDL, excuse me, there's some free EIDL money, right? So initially they, mm -hmm. they had a grant for up to $10,000 and they weren't able to process it fast enough to get it out but the money was allocated for Congress. So the money is still there. So then this president and this administration said, hey, listen, SBA, restructure that, make sure they can get their money. So if you had initially tried to get your EID, the EIDL grant mm -hmm. the first time, you should have gotten an invitation in your inbox directly from them saying, hey, you know, um, it's available for you to get, get the money up to $10,000. That is different than the SBA EIDL disaster funds. Right. I kept hearing that, but right. and I did eventually get an invite when I responded. They did not they before I could even um email it back in for both businesses. I already I had all the information and the numbers and all that stuff. They denied them both. So that, so now let me really say the second me. piece of this. The second piece okay. of what you what you asked um also applies to what Zenga's talked about in the beginning about um structuring and accounting, right? So okay. it, and, and I can talk, like I said, reach out to me and let's look at your individual situation. What it mm -hmm. sounds like to me is that mm -hmm. really they treated you as a uh, um uh like a, a schedule schedule C mm -hmm. because based on what I'm assuming how you're structured 
And you mentioned you had employees and then you mm -hmm. said you had a secondary company. So if mm -hmm. on your tax returns, your tax return is showing your schedule C with a certain amount, that's gonna mm -hmm. reflect that you can't get money on the second one because you, you said on your tax return that you made X amount gross and it's not reflecting on the second company. I didn't do taxes on either one of them yet because mm, okay. they kept saying, oh, just let's wait. pause there. Let's pause. Okay. Let's pause there, Rosane. Reach out right. to me. Okay. <laughs> right. And then let's, <laughs> you know, now we're getting, we're drilling down a little bit too deep. So, let, but, but reach out and let's, let's figure it out. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Sherry. Hi, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can. Okay. I have a question. Um, I had multiple business artists. Also, um, I ran a printing company, still has it, but I didn't file taxes on it at all. So I applied for a, um, the SBA under like my freelance makeup artist because I had an EIN, but I had got, um, I got rejected for it. Is, am I still able to apply um, for like the EIDL with the other businesses? Cause I didn't have any employees. Um, I really just, with the, the uh, printing company, I really just, um, you know, pay people per job, um, right. other freelancers, like for graphics or whatever I needed. So, so and we, I haven't filed any tax returns on so, so we would need to look at your situation. Um, at, first, at first glance, hearing what you're saying, I would say yes. The challenge is, you they funded you got money before right for the personal for the makeup artist right? no, i didn't get no funding at all so you got did you get denied when you applied for the makeup person yeah i got denied okay so so let's let's look at your situation and well one if you didn't file any tax return listen you got to be in it to win right you got to be in it to win. Mm -hmm. so if you didn't file then that could be one trigger but if if the way that you applied for the makeup business because that could be considered um, you know, a, a self-employment situation, it just depends on how your document right. look, right? So okay. it, it could be something as simple as the way your documents were structured. You know what I'm saying? So being, being mm -hmm. properly structured is, is where the answer is. And if you have other businesses, then what we need to do is look at your businesses, figure out how you, you know, have it organized. And then what we can do is actually work with you to file, okay? and then show you what the pros and cons are for filing and how much, you know, th what that's gonna look like. Mm -hmm. And and by the way, we'd like to make a record. I'm encouraging people to file, but just so you know, um, you know, we, we have a, we, 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 we don't make money on your filing. So there's no, there's no benefit to us for you filing, right? I'm not, I'm not advocating that. So just wanted to throw that little caveat in there, but you need to, right? And here's another tip from me. This is some Jeremy stuff. People have a tendency to tell you when you start a business, that you should um, always have a loss. And I think that's bad business advice, right? That's bad business advice. You can't, you can't be doing business and have a loss, right? So, cause how did you pay the bills? How did you operate? So a lot of times people do that and you know, it's not, it's not to me, it's not good guidance. I think you should show a profit and your tax person, um, if you're working with us or your independent tax person should show you what the pros and cons and how much tax responsibility you're going to pay. Right. And then help you to make a decision. But like I said to you before, if you get the money and you position yourself, right. Right. Once you have money, you can make some money. Right. It's easier to make money when you got some, right. Would you agree everybody? So mm -hmm. once you have some money, you can make some money. And I think that's the important part. It's important for you to look at it that way. So, let, so, so hopefully I answered your question, Sherry. Reach out and I'm happy to maybe look at your individual situation. We can speak a little bit more intelligently and maybe we could get you some funding, yes. Okay, just reach out through the, um, the website, I mean, the link that you had gave us. Yeah, yeah. Did you drop in there? Yeah, send a point. Okay. okay. Appreciate it, thanks. All right. Um, what else? I saw, hold on, let me see a couple of participant hands raised. Did I get everybody? All right, so I think I think we're good. Um, wait, one more. You're welcome. I'm happy. Hopefully, I gave you some information that was valuable. Hopefully, you, you know Zenga shared some 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 nuggets that inspired you guys. Listen, you know, if if you're if you're starting a business, let's pick a time and date to do it. Let's just get it done, right? Let's let's get moving. 
Um, and make sure I didn't miss anybody. Did I miss you, you see Yolanda Thomas in there? Because she couldn't get in earlier. We was maxed out. Yolanda? Yeah. If you're here, Yolanda, drop a message in the uh, She the got her hand up. up. Or raise your hand. And guys, you know, start, listen, imagine if you had a business. So if you're, I'm talking to the people in the room that didn't have a business, right? Um, and so imagine if you, I'm going to, I'm going to drop the hands for those that are raised so that um, we can see somebody who's fresh in case. But imagine if you, if you were in a position where you had your business early and everything was in order, right? Man, imagine how much cash you could really be put, you know, structuring and securing yourself. Yes, I see it now. Hi, Yolanda. Hi. Go ahead with your question. Okay, so last year I was able to get um, the PPP loan and the EID loan. And so this year I'm trying to reapply and I got denied once. And then now I've been waiting for over a month um, and I don't know what the issue is. Now it could be, I hadn't filed taxes on it just yet. Um, so I don't know if that's the issue. And um, also the SBA sent me an email saying that I could get more money under the targeted loan. And then they sent me another one. So I don't know which one I should try to apply for because they're asking for my transcripts, but I didn't file my taxes. Okay. Well, thank you for, for, for I'm a, so I, I want to make sure I'm answering right. You're just saying, which one should you apply for? Is that your question? Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you for sharing and um, both. Right. So mm -hmm. we just need to make sure that here's the thing. If your documents don't line up, that's how you're going to get denied. Right. So, you know, if, if, if we typed in on the application, your EIN number, but your tax return was missing, you know, the EIN number, like, like what Zynga shared before, you know, you're going to get denied. So it's stuff don't match up. Right. Mm -hmm. if the address okay. on your license don't match up with the address on the application and and or the possible address on the on the tax return is going to get held up, maybe denied. Right. So there's a lot of reasons why people can get denied. And it doesn't have to just be that you just don't qualify. It could just be something clerical. Now, this is big and people don't realize it. if you have multiple entities. Right. What you should also consider or realize is that your tax return or your accounting need to also line up when you're applying because remember they're they're giving they're they're paying they're paying you money because you as a owner of a business or a self-employed person right lost on out, lost out on wages so you need to so if you have two companies and your accounting is is proper then you and you have the documentation to support the two companies then you could get two different checks right and then the EIDL, that's that's how a lot of people got money because they had different companies. Some people, and then some people just lucked out. Like if you didn't file and you didn't have none of that stuff, and initially you put an application and you got it, man, you, you know, you lucked out and you know, good. But now you can come back and properly structure your entity paperwork, right? It's not too late. They've extended the, the tax, the tax filing deadline, right? For 2020 to um to, to end of May, right? So you're in a good position again, right? Because that means nobody gonna look at you sideways with the side eye, like, wait a minute, what you doing? You, you modifying your tax return, why? Because we're in a crazy time. So if you had already filed and you realize that, you know what, there's a discrepancy, right? Then this is a great opportunity for you to be able to go back and say, okay, I wanna modify you know, my, my tax return that I filed in 2019. And that way I can be in a position, you know, to financially um, collect on the funds. By the way, um, and you got always be able to back it up. In order to get the round two, right, in a, in a small window, then you would need to be prepared to show how there was a change in your income in, from, um, from 2019 and, Febu and from February, 2020, right? So that means, again, same thing. We would need to, 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 to work with you um, to make sure that your paperwork is structured properly. Again, same, same scenario. It, all right, hopefully I responded to your, your question, uh, Yolanda. 
And if you have any questions, same thing, you could, you know, just reach out and we could work on, you know, directly figuring out, um, you know, what, what your situation is and, and helping you to make sure you can benefit. Any other questions? All right, man. I think I'm gonna kick it back over to you, sir. Oh man, we good, man. Thank you. Um, thank you, Zynga. Um, man, I mean, everybody just, you know, chime in, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and man, this is so dope because man, I, I kid you not, man, the vision for me, bro, in creating a family wealth club was to be able to see professionals, especially professional husband and wife teams to be able to come and present and, and share information that can get, you know, the person to where they're trying to go. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the bomb. I'm sorry, man, but it's just the bomb motherfucking diggy. I got to say it like that. You know what I mean? I, I try to, I don't want to say it no other way. God damn it. This is shit right here. You know what I'm saying? So I look forward because even with, you know, Zing on trademark and I'm like, well, shit, we can do that. We can do that at the end of at the end of the month on a webinar if you want to do something on trademarking and and or what you hold for the sisters, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it's about. I tell people, man, I want to, you know, I want to share the platform and, and I want people who ain't scared. You got something to say, God damn it. Open up your mouth and share your resource so we can network with each other. And the quicker that we can do that, you know what I mean? Yo, we all be good. So that's why I don't be tripping like y'all give you this game on this real estate thing. Here it is. As soon as you make a deal, I may be in the business. I'm, look, I suppose I close on the property this week. Lady only want 15 grand. It got back taxes on it like a bunch. She ain't never paid the taxes on it. But the county ain't sweating it because the city is a little, you know, distressed. The county ain't sweating it. It makes great cash flow. And I can give them $6,000 and start a, um, you know, yeah. and start a payment plan on it. So for 21 K I can take control of the asset comfortably and get the County to back up, even though they ain't pressuring me right now, 15 K gets the asset. Another six K is a 20% down payment. Cause it's 30, 30,000 on taxes, but they're, they wrap that up in five years. I can pay them out, but the tenants going to pay them. And we got another asset. You see what I'm saying? So these deals be coming all the time. And I'd be like, man, I can, Technically, I can pass it to somebody or we can partner if somebody want to do it. And I'm, my point is, the sooner y'all in the position, we all in the position, you know, we may can do something big where I catch you in this cycle where, oh, shit, you, what you got? You got 200? Shit, I got 200. Next thing you know, let's take this four and let's leverage that into something times three because, you know, we're going to use that as a 30 percent down payment. And now we are growing and we just there. So please, y'all. Take advantage of these opportunities. If you got some share, let's network. That's what it's all about, man. And, um, you know, you can close it out, man. I'm good, man. Uh, man, Zenga, any, any, any words you want to share? Um, if, if it's okay with you, I, I want to drop a lot of little nuggets, especially for any of those, oh. all those creative oh. people. Um, but I, I'm a, well, let me do it. For, let me comment first, Zenga, and then you can tag it and, and close it in that way. But um, from a, trademark is important. Um, and, you know, people, push the trademark. And what I will say to you is, is understand that copyrights, man, I think copyrights has people is under, is under understood. Um, I forgot to use a phrase that, you know, Zing and I was, was driving, we were talking about how we, how, what were, what were we gonna say? You know, what's some of the stuff we're gonna try to touch on? And sometimes you don't get to touch on all the things, right? But you don't know what you don't know. And that's a powerful phrase because the, the um, Marley, reach out to me. I would love to, to, to you know, work with y'all on, on communicating with our Latina brothers and sisters, you know, as well. But by you not realizing that there could be a simple thing you change, you got denied and you're like, oh man, or you heard something in, in you know, in, uh, out there on social media or, you know, on the news or whatever, and you just made a decision without getting the facts and you lose out. So, um, it's important to realize that there's a lot of stuff you don't know, and you, you you might be you might be walking on money in your house. You may you may have done some things before, month that that can bring you income into your household, and you didn't realize it. And I, I'm starting out by saying that's the power of what copyright, you know, can do. And I think that you should look look around your house. If you're a songwriter, or author, if you got some tips you want to give somebody. Right. 
you want if you got some 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 information you got a unique concept you have you know you have an interesting business model you have a um any of those scenarios right what we can do is walk you through the process of how to protect it using copyright filing and then you can then monetize that thing through all sorts of means right trademark is powerful i'm not saying no to the trademark right so now once you got a, a concept going now trademark applies and I'm a, I'm a, so i just wanted to drop that in there because sometimes people don't really realize you know that they that they have money in their pockets and not realize it you know through their skill set through their talent and you know zeng i want to pass it to you really quickly uh, to add some closing words Oh yeah, we, we do have um, amazing collaboration with the United States Patent and Trademark Office as well as the United States Copyright Office. So we're good with that. But I like what you said about um, people do talk about trademarks a lot. Remember a trademark is, the, is a symbol or a tagline or a word or a phrase that points people to your business. So I use the example of golden arches. You see that, you never wonder where your fries came from, right? So it's important when you say, Copyright, copyright protects the work, the service, the good, the actual art form. If it's a business model, if it's a book, if it's a concept or idea, it protects that. Trademark is just to let people know where that came from. So we wanna make sure we are protecting um, the work, the creation. And sometimes that's more important than a trademark because you may not be in business for years and years like McDonald's and it don't matter. So people do spend a lot of money investing in trademark, but maybe you need to protect the item, the goods, the service itself before you start uh, worrying about your, your trademark. Now, if you're in business and the, there's value to the trademark, I'm not saying don't protect it. But, you know, like when you start talking about publishing and licensing and selling, um, doing commerce, uh, Biden talked about that in, in his proclamation. Like we, when we start talking about putting our gifts into commerce, that's when it matters. So I'm glad you brought that up. Absolutely. Um, any any, any uh, encouraging words for the the folks who have companies or those who are, quite a few people said that they you know they they plan to you know get a company started this year. Um, and, and anything you want to share to inspire somebody to you know get started or and also getting you know getting reaching out to an expert. Right. By, by way, by way of the Family Wealth Club, you guys have gotten access to um, a really, a really and not because I know her, not because I work with her every day. Right. Not because I personally I'm, I'm close with her, but this is a powerful, you know, uh, business attorney, uh, trademark protection attorney, intellectual property attorney, <clears throat> but really a, a, a advocate for creative. And in our world, we don't consider creatives, songwriters, music, fashion only. Any kind of creator, right? Mr. Noble is a creative. He built this family wealth club. Was it been, it's been about what, three, four, three years? I've been mean, watching three or four years yeah, when he yeah. first talked about it with the seal, right? Mm -hmm. And was, was encouraging and, and, and doing his, his, his services and, and building. And so he created this model and then work through it. That's a creative. And so it's there's some stuff there that's that's protectable. There's some stuff there that's unique. Um, you know, so you are a creative if you're thinking of doing unique businesses. The young lady before Sherry, I think, has four four different business things. She's a creative. You're a creative if you're if you're in that space, not just a songwriter or a book or author or something like that, a performer. So please keep that in mind, guys. That that don't if you don't realize that you're limiting yourself by not um, embracing the, 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 the skill set or the gift that you have because you're considering a side hustle, this is the time for you to embrace it and get started and reach out to us and get an expert to, to analyze what you have and, and show you. And if, you don't, if you're not sure, you know, you got a skill and if you're not sure, man, how can I make money with this? I, I love doing blank, but I'm not sure how to make money with it. We love helping you how to figure that out. Right, we love. It's just good to have somebody else can help you think, think, think a thing through. Right, maybe, maybe you know, Noble, if he's willing to to attest to that. You know, we had a conversation last week sometime, and I was like, man, what, what, what if that same scenario went this way or that way? And he <coughs> himself was like, man, I didn't think of it that way. That's the point. By you just sharing with someone who's advocating for you, you will win. And you know, I see, I saw a lot of different um, faces and people 
in this group. And I really want, I really want for everyone to have the opportunity, um, you know, to, 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 to win. And so that's why I wanted to make sure that, um, you know, we, 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 we close this way. I, I want you all to win and I look forward to it. I saw some folks setting appointments. Um, I'm proud of you. And um, Ricardo is here. Mr. Patino is here. Uh, one, of our, one of our team members, he's joined us and he's going to be busy tomorrow coordinating your your sessions so we're happy we're happy to, to to help you guys if you need uh nevea um i i, I see you so let's talk about that uh, restaurant revitalization money <laughs> yeah oh nevea oh you the bomb and th zango thank you by the way okay so there's some other money okay okay back, let's back up i'm sorry i should have said that before i know we, we're trying to wind it down to close it she's like I got a restaurant. So there's a restaurant revitalization fund fund that was just released, right? Like, like it was it last week? I just it was just released for the for the application to be submitted. Literally. We're 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 heading down to Florida. We got some people down there we're working with. You know, um, Maryland, they're opening a restaurant, you know, golf course restaurant. So yes, um, there's funds there for you. And 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 since you said that, it just reminded me if you are uh agent so like maybe you're not a um maybe you're not a songwriter or artist or whatever but you work with artists or djs or promoters right or if you are a promoter there's another grant that's it's a grant like actual just free money that's that just opened up well it's opened up recently but they had closed the portal they reopened it it's a grant application for if you used to promote shows, if you're a club promoter, if you a venue, an arts gallery, you know, any of those spaces, if you fall into any of that, there's literally a grant available through the same SBA pandemic um, that we can we can work with work with you on. So um I, I man, thank you for for, for Nevea for saying that and, and Zenga, because I I would have I would have been remiss to have left the room um tonight without sharing with you guys about those opportunities as well through the same FB, you know, pandemic resources, they have um, funds available for that. So what we can show you, um, we, I, I just need, I need Shelly about Florida. I just need South Florida is where we, we have clients. Um, I just need to get on the calendar and schedule it. So it's, it's, it's within a 30 day window this month. Um, same thing, just, just reach out. We can, we can coordinate for your situation as well. But keep that in mind. So if you if you are a producer, DJ, or you manage one of those, or you you if, if you used to do events, anybody in here used to do events? Raise your hand real quick. If you used to do events, um, you can you can qualify for that. If you know somebody who got a venue, I used to do you know the if the fun the, the window for the grant is quite broad. If you are a manager, or agent, if you used to be an agent, a manager. And you say, if you helped your homie, right? Any of those criteria, you can we can finagle it. It's so broad to cover the artist, entertainment, performers category. That's gonna be for you. Um, what's the name of the grant? Hang on. It's it's. If you give me a second, I'll pull it up because I'm working on a um, couple for someone. S B A. It's like venue grant. Hang on, I'll get it for you in a second. It's 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 it's, it's a it's literally a, a venue grant. A uh, shuttered shuttered venue operators grant, SBA shuttered venue operators grant. Um, so we have quite a few individuals that uh, we work with who are managers of you know talent and bookers, talent bookers, and we're working on helping them. You're a promoter and an artist. Um, you know, like I said, same thing, reach out, Erica. Um, there may be some additional funds for you by this grant. And, you know, you Google it. Um, it's, it's a little involved, but it's not too hard to achieve. We just need to put together some documents and, you know, and, you know, show, show, show and prove. And this is a beautiful thing, documenting your stuff. So, you know, I use my bank card, my business bank card for everything. And if you don't have one, I will um, I will email Noble a um, a list of like online banks that will work with people to get you a business bank account. 
that you know that won't because sometimes people have had issues with a bank and the account got closed, whatever the situation might be. So reach out. Um, and I will, you know, send I'll send you the, the links to some of those online banks that will help you get a, get account, get an account. And at a minimum, open a separate account that you use for business if you a personal account at a minimum that's separate from your personal expenses and that will help you but if you if you find that you need a little help with like getting a business account because you had an issue i know sometimes people throw it out and take that for granted that oh man you know you don't have a business bank account so i don't want to take that for granted that everybody here you know may, may be able to do that so if that's you again same thing i'm happy to provide some resources um to help you get a bank account there are banks that will help you that will give you a business bank account and if you don't have a business, and if you're in this room and you don't have a business right now, then that's your goal for tomorrow, this week. You need a you need a business. If the business is only if it's only your name, LLC or S Corp, you need a business. And no, that's that's a that, that's a, a a fallacy or um a, a, what's the word when it's from this fake story? No bank requires you to have tax returns to open a bank account. They a business bank account. They require you to have some kind of a business, but they don't require you to have a um, tax returns. They won't ask you for your tax returns at the bank to open a business bank account. Go ahead, uh, Phil. Thank you. Hey, uh, thank you for everything. Question for you. Is this just for um, those individuals that had a business during the pandemic? So February, March of last year, or is it uh, for individuals um, who are creating a business right now as far as applying for the um, PPP? It is, um, in order to apply for the PPP, you had to have had a business prior to, uh, I wanna say 2019, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Prior to the pandemic, right? So okay. if you had opened your business in 2019 anytime, then then that you, you'll be good. If you now, what I told earlier in this call, I don't know if you got that part clear. If in fact, depending on what you do, and even if you didn't have a business, like a business bank account or a particular type of business filed, but if you are a hairstylist, right? And you can prove that you're a hairstylist, right? Then there is a room for you. There's a way to make that work. If you're a, a real estate agent, right? There's room for you to so the, so. There's still if if you believe that yes, you have you are doing some kind of business during the pandemic and the pandemic affected you, then all I can say is you know reach out and let's let's look at your unique situation. We'll ask you some more questions and then that's how we'll be able to figure out where you are. So, um, let's let's uh let's kick it back over to Anpu and um, thank, you. thank you so much, guys. You know have a great night. It's Sunday, um, and look forward to making some amazing things happen for you guys this week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, stay, on the, um, stay by your email, ladies and gents, because um, I, I definitely want to do something. I'm going to text you tonight, Jeremy, and thank you again, Zynga. I want to do something with Zynga on um, trademarks, copyrights, and we put some type of special together for you guys, uh, and we do another webinar strictly for that, you know what I mean? And then when yeah. you go for that service, it's, it's a special built in for you. So salute. Thank you. Uh, everybody have a, have a good night, man. You need us. Hit us up. Appreciate you. Peace. All right now.